Hello folks, today we're gonna be telling you an amazing story. The year was 1997 and it was a regular day in Costa Rica's Guanacaste conservation area. All of a sudden, a bunch of trucks came and dumped all the cargo on the ground. This cargo was actually a bunch of orange peels. Yes, you heard that right, orange peels. During the next year, over a thousand trucks came to this gorgeous spot and dumped over a staggering 12,000 tons of orange peels. So why did they do this? Were they trying to ruin this peaceful land? Were they going to make this their regular garbage dump area? And what happened to this land? Well, stick around to the end of this video and you'll get the answer to all of these questions. When humans join forces, pretty much anything can happen. And this is a perfect example of that. In 1997, two ecologists from the University of Pennsylvania, who also served as the advisors for the Guanacaste Conservation Area, teamed up with a relatively young fruit juice company called Del Oro. These ecologists were the incredible husband-wife team Daniel Jansen and Winnie Halowich. Ever since their graduation from Princeton in 1976, the two had focused on ensuring a better future for the endangered tropical forest ecosystems. And did you know that the country of Costa Rica accounts for 6% of the entire world's biodiversity? So obviously, ecologists of this country were working really hard to protect the country's fascinating wildlife. Now, this juice company owned the land that shared a border with the Guanacaste Conservation Area, which was the land that the conservation organized really wanted to own. And thus, a deal was struck. In exchange for this land, they would allow the company to dump some of their agricultural waste in designated areas. We know, we know, the idea of allowing dump sites on conservation land sounds like the stupidest thing ever. But trust us, it was very, very well thought out. The two ecologists were sure that securing this land was a great idea, despite the apparent drawbacks. But of course, there were a few conditions. First and perhaps most obviously, Del Oro was only going to be allowed to dump agricultural waste. Yep, the orange peels. Second, the company was banned from using any kind of insecticides or pesticides on its plants. This was done to protect the native plants from any kind of harmful chemicals. Again, another really smart move. The next condition was that the pulps had to be rinsed in lemonine oil, and this was something the company gladly agreed to doing, as they could sell this stuff off for use in household cleaning products. Finally, the orange peels could only be dumped on parts of the park that were previously being used for cattle grazing. Why, you might ask? Well, because these were mostly the areas where most of the soil was poor, degraded, and not really of any use. Yeah, these conditions were kind of weird, but at the same time, it was a small price to pay for being able to dump all of their orange peels and pulps that would otherwise be completely and utterly useless. So thankfully for everyone involved, Del Oro agreed. The deal was struck for about 20 years, and basically, the juice company was allowed to dump over 1,000 truckloads of orange peels and pulps every single year. Yeah, you can do the math. That means a total of 250,000 metric tons of agricultural waste would be dumped on the land during this time period. Again, you're probably thinking, what was the plan here? How do you plan to conserve a piece of land by allowing a massive company to dump stuff in here? Keep watching and you'll get the big picture soon. Soon, a rival fruit company called Tico Fruit realized that they could use this super weird agreement to their advantage and they actually sued Del Oro. Their claim was that this dumping was super dangerous. This would cause piles of rotting orange peels and flies, but more importantly, they thought this was super unfair. So why were they jealous? Well, because just a little while ago, Tico Fruit had to overhaul their company's waste processing facility, and they were very salty about that. The country's media started criticizing Del Loro's duping experiment, and everyone turned against them. People were scared that the national park was going to get destroyed. And because of this public outrage, the case ended up going to the country's Supreme Court. Many environmental groups came forward and assured people that the project was ecologically safe, but to no avail. They were dumping tons and tons of orange peels. Surely this couldn't mean anything good, right? Well, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of Tico Fruit, 
and Del Lora was asked to stop the dumping process. The project was soon shut down. However, the 12,000 metric tons of orange peels already dumped were left behind, and soon everybody started to forget about this hugely ambitious project. In fact, over the next 15 years, barely anyone even talked about it. In 2013, Timothy Truer, a graduate student at Princeton University, read up about this and naturally got very curious about the Great Orange Peel Experiment. He even connected with one of the original ecologists of the ACG Del Oro Project. For their research, Truer and a few of his fellow ecologists traveled all the way to Costa Rica. They came to the conservation area and started looking for the site. But to their surprise, they couldn't find it. There was not an orange peel in sight. They searched and searched for any sign of an orange peel, and they were lost in the beautiful forest. After dozens and dozens of site visits, they found the six-foot-long sign with bright yellow markings that basically labeled the barren, poor-quality soil. The reason this sign took so long to find is because it was so overgrown with vines that it could barely be seen. Truer realized what was happening and noticed the incredible difference between the fertilized and unfertilized areas. The land that was once infertile and barren was now an awe-inspiring, dense, vine-filled jungle. Yes, folks, the forest they were roaming in for so long was the barren land that had actually been used as an orange peel dumping site all those years ago. Now that's what we call a great twist. Instead of ruining the park like so many had feared, the orange peels had actually completely transformed the land. Then these researchers decided to quantify this change, and they discovered that there had been an astonishing 176% increase in above-ground biomass in the 7-acre area. That's not it. There had also been a three-fold increase in woody plant species and significantly elevated amounts of macronutrients and micronutrients. Huge fig trees were found, and they even spotted different kinds of animals that had migrated here because of the transformation. What's more, just 300 feet away, the situation was not nearly as good, and the researcher only found around eight tree species. In contrast, our orange peel site boasted 24 different kinds of tree species. Fascinating, isn't it? In just 15 years, a vibrant, beautiful rainforest had grown on a previously barren and apparently useless piece of land. But this wasn't really all dumb luck. Remember the husband-wife ecologist we mentioned earlier? They had planned this all along. Jensen and Hallwich had a vision, and they knew that while what they were planning seemed kind of ridiculous, they had full faith that it would eventually come good. They had noticed that the land had been overrun with invasive grass species that wouldn't really allow other plants to grow. What the notorious peels did was basically smother these grasses and decompose them into a loamy rich compost. Remember when we mentioned lemonine oil earlier? That oil can actually prevent a lot of plants from growing. These pressed peels and pulps were perfect for this task because they had been completely leached of this oil. Yeah, those weird conditions, they all paid off. This compost was packed with beneficial nutrients such as potassium, nitrogen, and phosphorus, and this was all it took for the plants in the area to thrive and grow. These nutrients coupled with the perfect weather helped pull off this awesome miracle. But remember, this is science. No one quite knows exactly why this incredible regeneration happened. One thing's for sure, this proves that if the private sector and ecological companies started collaborating for the benefit of the planet, some really cool things can happen. We'd like to add that please don't start dumping orange peels in your neighborhood. It won't turn your suburbs into a rainforest. Costa Rica is near the equator, so it's pretty warm and humid there all year long. This climate allows things to both decompose and grow quicker than it would happen in other parts of the world. If some company used this tactic in a place with lower temperatures, it would actually be counterproductive and would slow down the process. But again, this orange peel saga is one of the most beautiful stories of the last few decades, and we hope that everyone will learn a little something from it. Take care of the environment, be smart about it, and it will give back.
All right, what are your thoughts on this story? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to TrendJoint, and we'll see you in the next one.